Thank you, Maisie and Bon Appetit hosts. Hopefully my mic's on. I know that's been an ongoing thing today. Uh, and welcome all of you to, for the viewing parties and for those in the audience. And I'm really excited uh, and, and want to start off just by expressing some gratitude and appreciation for those who've come before me, for those who are working for many parts of the food chain that Joanne um, Lowe has talked about to the UFW and those who are harvesting the field. And I wanted to start with just a brief video of sharing some of the energy from a, a recent Northeast Summit where we brought high school and college students together to explore their power of change in the food system. The world! Change the world! Change the world! Real food to me is food that's nourishing to my own body. Real means to be genuine, authentic. Something honest and something that's pure. all of our lives in a lot more ways than we usually realize. Everything starts off with you, so you make the change. Yeah. yeah. We need to take responsibility for our actions and know that every decision that we make, it can either be oppressive or liberating, right? I think you actually take start at home, start taking care of their own community first. The change come from the youth. Young people have the power to do anything. Bringing people together for the benefit of the greater good for the future. The power of collaboration is unbelievable. The conference is great and you should, you know, check up about food and the kind of things that you eat. Unity Community Movement! Unity Community Movement! Unity Community Movement! <laughs> So I am based on the West Coast, and the Real Food Challenge is a national initiative with partners standing up all around the country. And to see and hear the stories from the Northeast Summit inspired our West Coast Summit that happens annually. And these conversations and dialogues started several years ago uh, in 2006, uh, when a number of young people and recent graduates began to talk about the food system and how broken it is and the challenges that we're facing. And so to briefly note, I think it's important to know where students are coming from. Not many of them are directly growing their own food and sharing it with their neighbors and, and based on a subsistence form of agriculture. They're actually enmeshed in this food system where a junk food industry spends over $4.2 billion a year to sell you their crap. And on top of that, um, a college student, by the time they come to campuses or of a college age, have seen over 70,000 junk food ads. So how are we t going to shift the mindsets of young people in a system that is telling them in every direction to do just the opposite? And that's exactly what the Real Food Challenge is trying to face, because if not, we're going to see kids growing up eating microwavable meat push popsicle sticks. And to me, that's not a future I want to see my one-year-old twin boys or any of my family or community be part of. And I don't think any of you out there would, would, would want the same either. So there's no handouts of those today. Uh, but the other image on there is an ancient Greek concept called kiros, and I've heard Wayne earlier and, and other speakers note how this is a really unique time. There's lots of challenges, and there's lots of opportunities, and this, this idea or theory is just that in kiros is a moment in time in which the past, present, future collide, where there are opportunities, and when people can come together meaningfully, transformation is possible, and that's the story of the Real Food Challenge. And it starts with everyone, and they come from all different aspects of what we call the, the real food wheel. So that can entail access, um, farm worker justice here, farmers abroad, farming itself, the ecology movement, concerns around culture and food, education and food. It could even entail aspects of pleasure and food. Um, and there are all different entry points for people to connect to food, since how many of you eat out there? So we're all eaters, and that's, that's a starting point. And other people are taking a more definitive role in the food system. And for me, when I came to college, I began looking at issues of pesticide drift, worker exploitation, and the community studies program at UC Santa Cruz with Julie Guthman. 
Uh, and through that, I, I realized I needed to do something about it as a student. And so I helped organize other students to begin a dialogue with the dining services. And we set up sustainable food purchasing policies. We worked with students for labor solidarity and worked to improve dining food service labor wages by $2 an hour and increased to in introduce unionized workforce at UC Santa Cruz for our food service laborers, as well as access to benefits for their families and health care. So they became part of the institution not a subservient service sector in a service industry. And I think that dignity and respect really drove me further to seeing what could happen broadly. And I helped launch a University of California-wide campaign for real food. Uh, and that campaign was signed into policy in 2009 by President Mark Udoff, making it the largest public university policy for sustainable food in the nation. Uh, and that whole process wasn't me, though, and I think that's the myth we need to break through, is it's about people coming together, inspired students standing up and allies on campuses across the country wanting to make change. And in 2006, that's exactly what happened. We were doing great advances in Santa Cruz and across the state of California, and we we're hearing about little pockets elsewhere of people working on food issues. But we were hearing them from the fair trade activists, the local food activists, the social justice activists, but those conversations were siloed. And again, I know Wayne Pascali mentioned we need to break these silos, and that's what the Real Food Challenge is aimed to do. So what we realized was we need to set a common goal. And currently, the food system has about 20 or 2% sustainable or real food. And our vision is to shift the institutional food systems of higher education to 20% by 2020. And that's over a $5 billion annual purchasing figure for institutions. So shifting 20% of that, um, which is now, you know, five or a billion dollars. So a billion dollars sounds like a lot, but when you come together with colleagues working on worker justice, on food security, on youth empowerment, on student organizing, a lot more is possible. And we've created a structure that involves regional field organizers that we have across the country. We have 10 of them. We have grassroots leaders popping up all across the country in individual campuses. We have a national steering com committee and advisory body with some of the broadcasters like Vandana Shiva, Michael Pollan, Anna LaPay helping to charge and amplify our work. And most importantly, you need a core team. So we refer to it as the A-team, that 80s show. I don't know how many of you have seen it, but those are the guys that when you need something done, you need to just give them a call and, and they'll show up. So our A-team um, puts it together. It's the national administrative team, but that doesn't sound as sexy. So A-team worked for us. And what we've done is we've realized the power of organizing. And we have over 400 campuses across the country as part of the Real Food Challenge, over 5,000 students standing up to take an action and a stance on changing their institutional food systems. Because higher education is not just about learning, and if students don't learn about changing those systems themselves, they could walk out with a degree but not a vision of how to become an active citizen in their communities. And that's exactly what the Real Food Challenge is doing, not just changing what's on the plate, but what's in the hearts and minds of those in those systems. So, lessons learned. I think this is an important thing. We've been going now. We launched officially in 2008, and we've had a few years under our belt. We've realized we need to connect to the larger sustainability movement on campuses to link in those, those actors and, and shape makers. We need to recognize cost savings because we're in an economic crunch. So we found how campuses, like at UC Santa Cruz, remove trays. It's like a natural evolution from kindergarten on. The trays get bigger as the students get bigger, then they throw them off. No more trays, and that reduced our food waste by 40%, saved a million gallons of water, and that money could be reinvested in real food. Um, we've also realized we need to partner on broader food messaging. So on Food Day, we are helping to host over 215 events in conjunction with Food Day across college campuses, uh, and we'll be launching our president's Real Food Commitment, which gives a top-level support for the great work dining, food services, workers, and students are doing on their campuses, and to give them the credit where credit's due. We've also realized we need to connect to the larger food justice movement and youth in high school in particular. Um, so my next brief slide, as I wrap up here, uh, is about Live Real. And Live Real launched in 2008, bringing together young people from the hood to the heartland uh, to come together and talk about their needs and vision of creating a change in society. Um, we created a design team that includes representatives from the Coalition of Immokalee Workers and Student Farm Worker Alliance um, to urban food movement leaders like Ms. Nikki Henderson, who's just up on stage, and others to help create a vision and a move entity. Not a new Prius in the parking lot, 
but a vision of new relationships of how young people need to problem solve together today to make the type of change we're seeing. We've just launched a website, liverealnow.org, where people can express commitments for change and mobilize to organize. We just hosted two food and freedom rides in commemoration and honor of the civil rights freedom riders. And we have much more to go and grow. And part of the Real Food Challenge and part of Live Real Now is to make those connections. It's not just about who's in school, it's about young people in all aspects and walks of life coming together for change. And that involves all of you as well out there. So it's not just me on stage here, but it's about how you can help young people empower them from their historically excluded and vulnerable communities to their ability to attend college and understand how to change those institutions. And it's about all of us having that vision together. So I invite you to join me in visioning a future where there's reverence and respect for all those who harvest, grow, process, distribute, prepare, cook, and serve our food. So thank you so much. Thank you.